Good afternoon, this is Ron Brown. It is uh, about 1.30 Central Time on April 19th, 2024. This is a continuation of the video I did yesterday about showing uh, my uh, favorite, showing and using my favorite prospecting scans. These are power techniques with the uh, software. Always remember the mark is your teacher and you're going to see an example of that today or further example, I should say. Once again, any stock index or ETF mentioned in this presentation is not a recommendation to buy or sell. All trading strategies are used at your own risk. Now, today I'm starting with uh, four charts uh, that I have uh, open on uh, Thinkorswim. And I just uh, am doing this to show you how messed up this market is looking at it from the top. Notice the uh, NASDAQ futures are down 300 points or 1.71, but yet the Dow is up uh, 0.52, the S&P 400 is up uh, 0.14, the 600 is up 0.65, Bitcoin's up 1.30, crude lights up slightly. But if I scroll down here to the comp, you can see that it's down 260. So 268, it's moving so quickly I can't say it, around 270 points. Then you move down here to the internals on the um, New York uh, or the NYA, there are 942 more advancers than decliners. You go down to the composite, it's uh, minus 50. You can see there are slightly more decliners than advancers. Now, what's really getting hit hard today are some of the big tech stocks, the semis. Here's AMD. If you look over here, this is a daily chart of it. I'll just maximize this. And look what has happened with AMD. It just uh, has totally broken down. Amazon breaking down. Let's go down here. I want to find... Uh, NVIDIA, if I can, well, Metastock, I'm sorry, Meta, not Metastock, Meta has not broken down as much. Earnings are coming up uh, before long. Microsoft is down another 1.11%. Here's NVIDIA, the market leader, or it was the market leader. And so you can see how much it's broken down. The high was 974, and it's currently trading at 782. 782.50 approximately. So we are in a correction in the high tech stocks. Let's look at one more. Look at SMCI. The high was 1229. Everybody's darling. Now trading at 725. You can see the three crossed the six right here. It crossed it up here. Then it went back positive for a little while. Then it crossed down, and it did cross up for a day or two and then down again. So it's uh, very painful for those who thought it was going to uh, continue to the moon, and it just uh, rolled over. Now let's go into HGSI. I'm going to show you uh, some of the views. By the way, since uh, uh, the video yesterday, I've added a few more views to this. Uh, I'm always experimenting, as you know, and this is uh, something that I came up with. Uh, I thought, you know, it'd be nice if I uh, looked at uh, a few of these money flow views in and out. And here's the one sorted on the industry percentage price change. This is the demand combo. And this is the demand combo. But with a VPA flag. Now I'm just accessing the smart group that contains all the VPA flags and it doesn't determine if it's an up, down, or an up flag or a down flag, but I think that's really an advantage because these are stocks with money flowing in, but look at this stock right here. Hellstream, yesterday it had an effort to fail. This is a VPA signal condition, so that tells me that it went down hard on light volume, but buyers are stepping into it. So let's just bring it up and you can see what I mean. 
Of course, now you have to look at um, the weekly chart, see what the trend is. The trend's still down. I certainly wouldn't be buying it now, but I just the information that I have with this intraday money flow, I can see that even though there was an effort to fail yesterday, that it is reversing today and has two VPA flags here. Strength seen returning after a downtrend. Strength seen returning after a downtrend. High volume adds to the strength. Look at the high volume here. So these, it's also got an effort to rise. These VPA flags are generated intraday. Now let's look at another one. Let's look at uh, some bullish signals there. Here's one where there was an effort to rise yesterday. I'm not familiar with this stock. It's a cheap stock. But let's look at it. Here's the effort to rise yesterday and it's continuing to rise. It's up another 3.29% today. Now let's compare the number of stocks on the money flow in demand without the VPA without the VPA there's 1501 where the money flow is showing up put the VPA on here cuts it down to 477 now if you just wanted to look at stocks that are up and you have certain VPA flags you want to look at uh, strength scene returning I'm going to make this full screen so I can see it a little better. Let's go up to the top. Test for supply. Like if you like test for supply, you can put them all here together. Or you can scroll down and look for effort to rise. Probably the fastest way to do that is it's, it's updating right now. Let's, I'll go ahead and let it update. is reverse this signal and then the ease will go near near the top here's up bar closing near the high it starts with and and then here is effort to rise right here here's an american electric power it's up 1.96 percent today and there you go right there and here is yesterday's effort to rise signal now, I think this will be helpful. That's why I put it in here. I only did it for a couple of these. I did it on all securities, VPA, and then intraday money flowing. Well, here, let me start over. Here's 1B, that's money flowing in with VPA, and here is 2B, money flowing out, intraday supply. And then down here, in the sector stocks, the S&P 500 sector stocks, money flowing in, that's 3B, and money flowing out on 4B. I'm just going to leave it right here, and let's go up here and take a look and sort on raw combo. And you can see that the money is flowing out of these stocks. And let's just take a look at Micron. I'm going to go all the way across here. It had an effort to fall yesterday. If I bring it up, you can see that it continued to fall today. Now, had this been in place back here on this day, it would have shown up as effort to fall. And boy, it's fallen hard since then. Now, these are just the stocks that are showing the effort to fall today and they also have a VPA signal condition but if I go back up 1 to 4A this is supply and there is no flag on Supermicro computer yesterday but the money is clearly flowing out of this stock but tomorrow or on Monday or Friday's close after you download it's going to show an effort to fall if it stays like this but it would have shown money flowing out on these two days using this scan let's look for nvidia it's right here there was no vpa flag on here so i'm giving us the option of just scanning 
for VPA flags or uh, scanning without VPA flags on the money flow in and out. Now you can always look over here and see if there are VPA flags or not. You can sort on the condition, go back up to the top. Yeah, I went the wrong way. You want to sort up and it's going to tell you where the BPA signals are. But rather than doing that, I just thought it would be nice to isolate these so we don't have to. Let me make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Demand. VPA flag. Yes, these all have VPA flag. I didn't have the filter uh, activated, but uh, that's that's what I've added to the money flow. Now I haven't done it to the most actives. So I may do that, uh, but it won't be in today's add-on. Now let me uh, take you back up here. Now before I leave this section, I want to show you how I put this filter together. This is the intraday information here. It's the same filter uh, accessing all securities, but I also put the requirement of a group membership in the smart groups, the VPA. HGS volume price analysis and the generated uh, Flag, or the VPA flags that are generated every night in the download. So that's how it's accessing that and uh, giving us this information. Before I leave uh, the money flow, I want to take you down here to number 11 and 12. Uh, this is the price change up intraday. These are stocks and groups. If you look up here, you can see it's 1736. Price down 17.89, so it's you know it's about one to one. But uh, if I bring the uh, chart back up and take a look at uh, the comp, well, I can look at the comp right here. Look, it's down 333 points, but the ADs on the NYC NYSE are still positive, and that's uh, where you can really get a lot of. Uh, information or see what the market's doing uh, in HGSI just by looking at these money flow indicators. Okay, I'm going to move on and uh, talk about my uh, scans here. I talked about the most active yesterday. The undercut and rally is, uh, the I put these together for Gil Morales, uh, he wanted uh, something, and uh, I, I just took the tools I had available in HGSI, and I think it's worked out pretty well, actually. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm just going to talk about the long side, but here are VPA flags or candles, if there's either one in the filter, and the fan is up, three is below the six, they pass the view and you can see there are 238 of them. Now I'm going to go into the intraday and I'm going to sort on raw combo and those stocks that are showing signs of accumulation and are the three is under the six, they are showing up here and I'm just going to bring a stock up here and then I'm going to change charts here. I'm going to go to my Undercut and rally, and I'll just go to number one. And you can see that this stock meets the qualifications. Here is the accumulation. The light green lines are accumulation, and uh, you can see that this crossed over today. But the scan is based upon what happened uh, yesterday and the prior day, and you can see that. There was a pullback, an effort to rise, strength coming in, confirmation of strength, and then the crossover today. Okay, I'm going to just take a look at one more. And here we go again. This sold off. Here the accumulation started on these two days. That's what the light green bars signify. And here's the crossover today. So 
Uh, these were designed to um, provide us with uh, uh, low-risk prospects. Now I'm going to move down to the next one. This is where the three crossed over the six. This is end of day, and here is intraday. And these have a two-day window. So with a zero, that means it crossed over yesterday. With a one, it means it crossed over two days ago. So let's just take a look here and here. With the dark green line, that signifies the crossover. It happened back here. It also happened back here with this stock. Here's Duke Energy. That's a familiar name. Here was one day of accumulation and then the crossover a day before, or yesterday, I'm sorry, and then the follow through today. Now, if you look over here to these columns, you can tell if it had a VPA flag. If it didn't have a VPA flag, it uh, was a bullish candle. I'll just bring one up and we'll take a look at that. You can see there was no VPA flag anywhere in here, but there were bullish candles. So I am scanning for, like I said, VPA flags or bullish candles. Okay, now these require a fan up. These down here don't require a fan. Fan means they're in a bullish mode. But if you want to look for others, like if you're doing some bottom fishing, I'll just click on this one right here. No fan required. See if... Well, this here's Iridium. You can see there's a bottom fish there. And there was a crossover, but look at the fan. Now let me go back up to the top. Click on one of these. And notice the fan. The moving averages are all in the right order. 100, I'm 200, 150, and 18. It's not a spread out fan, but they're in the right order. So it's going to pass this screen. Going down here, there's no fan required for these. Now, the next one is the same thing, except I require these to have shown up in the end of day money flow with last night's data. So all of these, and there are only 24 of them, they showed up in the money flow in, but yet they haven't, the three hasn't crossed the six. Let's see how these are doing intraday, and you can see that uh, several of them, and there, there's going to be repeat, repeats, uh, repetition from the prior scans, but there won't be as many. Let's just compare the two. There are, what, 24 here? And if I go up here and click on this one, there are 238. So you can see the big difference. These had money flow were contained in the money flow in, and it cuts it all the way down to 24. Okay, you can play with those. Uh, I think you have the idea. The only difference is money flow smart group on these. Next, continuation up and down scans. These are uh, stocks that uh, have a pocket pivot. The three is already crossed to six, and are, we're getting a bullish signal and let's just bring one of these up well badger meter had a huge move up yesterday i'm going to go back to uh, i'll just do my 2b contextual chart and i'll i'll get i'll find a better example well united airlines it's Pulling back a little bit today. Well, it's it it hit a new high, recent high, but it, profit taking. Anyway, the continuation requires that the three be above the six, and there is a volume pocket pivot, and uh, you can see that uh, these blue areas indicate that. So there were 65 securities that were showing follow through. Of course, they didn't all follow through. You're going to see some. Well, not many negative stocks, but let's just grab another one. How about Alaska Air Group? Same group. 
Okay, the three crossed over the six here. Here's where the signal was on the follow through. Because if you look down here, you'll see pocket pivots. So these are continuation up. Well, that, I'm sorry, that was the end of day. I, I need to show you the intraday. Let's see how many follow through. This is what I was looking for. When you see blank areas here, it just means that uh, these uh, quotes are not being provided by Thinkorswim. Okay, but a lot of these did follow through on intraday, and uh, these are the ones that uh, I would be most interested in. Let's take a look at old, let's see, old second bank corp. Uh, the weekly chart is, uh, it's been trying to move up and it looks like it's trying to break out now, but this is your continuation signal right here. Now I'm not going to show you the downside. It's the same thing, just in reverse. Now here's money flow in end of day. Now I primarily use uh, the intraday when I'm sitting here at the computer, but if you want to look at uh, any of these scans here, these are the stocks that are generated in money flow at the end of day. And then this will be the end of day list, but showing intraday. So you can see a lot of these followed through. Going to make this full screen. And remember, this is a terrible day uh, for the, the NASDAQ. But a lot of these stocks followed through. Yes, there's a lot of red here towards the bottom, but these showed accumulation at the end of the day, which the requirement at the end of the day was, and I'll go back up to the end of day here, that they be at least 50% of their daily range and the volume is greater than the percent volume to the 90-day moving average. So it's price and volume as of the end of the day. And then I've got other scans in here. These are pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, I'll explain the pocket pivot money flow end of day. These are stocks which had a positive price change. Their range was above 50, but their volume did not reach a greater number than the volume, the percent volume of the 90-day moving average volume. You can see this column's red. The other one was, was green. But it still generated a pocket pivot. So if I, well, that's not a good example. It either generated a pocket pivot or an effort to rise. That's in the filter. So you can see that uh, even though this volume on this particular stock yesterday was not above the 90-day average, the volume was higher than any down volume day in the previous five days. So that's why a pocket pivot is generated. So not all accumulation has heavy volume. And that's why I put this pocket pivot scan in here. So here's the intraday. And then uh, these are optionable stocks. And here's money flow in optionable. There's only three that were there, and let's see if any are going up today. Well, two out of the three are going up. Kraft Heinz and Pepsi. Now, money flow out is just the opposite end of day. I'm not going to take the time to go through them. You can experiment. Now, these next several, these I just put in, um, I believe, last week, and I explained them, but I'll do, uh, explain them again quickly. What uh, my thought process here is that uh, you have to, I wanted best of Woodward and Brown. The stocks have to pass multiple user smart groups or smart groups to be included. So this one right here, number eight, best of Woodward and Brown top 50 group inclusion report, and money flow in. Had to pass all three of those. 
And if I click on, you can see that there were eight of them or are eight of them. And if I click on them, four of them are up today. The ones that are down today, now it looks like GCT, GigaCloud, is one of the main losers. But four out of eight on a mixed market day like we're seeing today, uh, not too bad. Okay, the next one, perfect speculator. So these stocks are either hitting a 52 week high or a three and a quarter year high. And to pass these filters, they have to pass a perfect speculator filter, the top 50 group inclusion report, and also be showing up in money flow in. I do want to point out that uh, on these scans on the money flow in, I'm not requiring the percent volume to the 90 day moving average volume uh, be uh, green or positive, but I am requiring that the range, first of all, the price has to be positive and the range has to be above 50%. I didn't want to limit it too much because you can see that uh, these numbers are, are close here on this one. Uh, down 13.6% below the 90 day. I mean, that seems like a lot, but I just didn't want to eliminate too many stocks because I've got the requirement that they have to be showing up in three smart groups. So that's why I am not being particular about the uh, percent volume being above the 90 day moving average volume. Okay, let's... Uh, Let's look at the intraday on this one. You can see that on this uh, perfect speculator top 50 and money flow in that, uh, uh, let's see, 11 of them out of uh, 13 are positive today. Now the next one, top 50 group inclusion report and money flow in. You can see once again that some of these are red from last night and how many passed? 34. And if I go to the intraday, how many are green today? 23. Not too, not too bad. So the purpose of these is to just, if you just want to find some strong stocks that are showing money flow and uh, some of these other characteristics, you don't have to spend a lot of time prospecting. And then finally, there's one more top 50 group and inclusion report and money flow in plus the continuation requirements. So let's look at this. What do we have? 10 of them. Let's see how many of these are positive day. Seven of them are positive. That giga cloud is uh, down the most. But if I click on one of these, and this is a good example, you can see there's no pocket pivot here because there was a down. Let me bring up a... Uh, arrow here. There was a down day with heavy volume, so no pocket pivot was generated, and that's why I'm using the effort to rise also. It's an either-or situation. If there's no pocket pivot, but there is an effort to rise, it's going to pass the filter. Now, I'll probably come up with a few other ideas for these multi-scans. They seem to be, uh, uh, they seem to work pretty well. And don't forget to pay attention to these undercut and rally uh, scans. And uh, just remember that uh, you don't have to scan on all securities. I'm going to go back up here. And I'm just going to go into, uh, I'll go into the major market components. Uh, this is a down day for the NASDAQ 100. You can see that there are no stocks showing up here. But if we go to the Russell 2000 and sort on raw combo, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the bearish trades. I wanted the, the bullish trades. So these are showing up as of last night. And then on the intraday, there's a few bearish scans in here. I don't really use them, but I put them in there. Anyway, uh, you can see that uh, 
on the Russell 2000, there are several stocks that undercut, looking at these two columns here, and they and they rallied. Let's go back to that NASDAQ 100. I, I was on the wrong uh, scan, but you can see that uh, none of these that undercut rallied except for this one right here, Baker Hughes, because we're in a very weak group today. Now I'm going to drop down to the fans that crossed over yesterday and Kraft Heinz is positive but Google is negative. But just remember you can apply these to anything. If you have your own user smart group or one of my user smart groups you can really weed out a lot of stocks before you even apply the undercut and rally scans to those stocks. Now I'm going to show you one more thing before I leave this presentation. I'm going to go down into my okay these, these are what I've been showing you right here favorite uh, daily prospecting since the end of the day and intraday and I'm going to go down into my regular scans and I'm going to go to my top down process views for ETF analysis click on scorecard end of day and then I'm going to drop down into my major markets analysis user groups and click on major ETFs and ETNs and I want to point out that I added some more ETFs and ETNs. I added all the most popular ETFs and ETNs to the list that I had before. I think I added maybe 13 more but this if you just want to uh, read on the market, these ETFs under the major ETFs ETN folder under market analysis user groups really gives you a good feel. You can see uh, 